Getting it real with Wong Chun Wai on the hottest topics, frank, engaging, and candid. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Has been more than five decades since the formation of Malaysia. What does it mean to Sabah and Sarawak for helping to form this country? With us tonight is Sabahan Philip Guringai and Sarawakian Gary Malaysia Nikan. and followers from around the world. Tonight, we have two special guests. We have uh, Philip Golingai and Gary Ninken. Philip Golingai, as you all are aware, is a senior news editor of The Star. He's a prominent political analyst and commentator. He's a true blue Kadazan, who is probably says that he's from Penampang, Kota Kinabalu. And... He says that the future is in Sabah. Okay, of course, Gary Lincoln is the president of the uh, Sarawak Dayak Graduates Association, and regards himself as a proud young Sarawakian. He is a graduate from University of Malaya, and a member of the Royal Institute of Surveyors Malaysia. He also says that the future is in Sarawak. <laughs> So we have these two fine gentlemen here to share our thoughts as we celebrate Malaysia Day. And every year, without fear, I will tell that the people from Peninsula, the Orang Malaya, okay, <laughs> that Sabah and Sarawak did not join Malaysia. They helped to form Malaysia. Okay, I repeat, Sabah and Sarawak helped to form Malaysia. Without these two states, there would be no Malaysia. And of course, over the past two general elections, and as we head towards GE15, more than ever, we must always spark in our mind that there could be no federal government if Sabah and Sarawak do not lend support and do not provide political stability to the federal government. So that's how important these two states are. And we want to start this conversation uh, tonight by asking these uh, two gentlemen, the dynamics in Malaysia have changed so much. So much have so much water has passed down the bridge, so to say. Now, these states are vital for political stability. As I said earlier, without these two states giving the support and endorsement to the federal government, we wouldn't have a federal government. Now, what do both of you hope for and want to see from Malaysia as we move towards GE15 and for the future of Malaysia? Uh, perhaps we can start off with Philip. What are your hopes? Okay, uh, my hope is, um, okay, the thing about Sabah is we always feel, but then I realized that even Kelantanis, Johor also, they have the same complaint actually. So it's it might not be a unique Sabah thing, which I always thought it was a unique Sabah thing. We feel that we are like, we call it anak tiri of Malaysia. But then when I hear grumblings from my friend from Kelantan, even Johor also have threatened to... Uh, uh, what you call it, to, to reconsider Relief. Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, I, I use the <laughs> diplomatic word to reconsider Malaysia. So I, I think that uh, everybody should be equal. And then especially now that Sabah is uh, Sabah and Sarawak is equal partner to Peninsula Malaysia. So what they want is they feel that they bring a lot to the table, actually. For example, oil and gas. Mm. And the returns are not there. So I think what we want is it's we want to be... Uh, through and through equal partner and not just uh, in that paragraph or in that sentence. Philip, I want to follow up with uh, another question. Uh, previously, uh, such uh, indifferences, you used the word anatiri, the lack of attention uh, given to these two states uh, and that it was sort of like uh, allowed to move on, allowed to go on, okay? Uh, but this time, uh, it's probably much more difficult. Um, the the perception or the speculation of the G15 is that uh, again we may have a situation where we will not be the parties would not have enough uh, seats to form a government. Now, um, the dynamics I said have changed. Okay, this time you say that you Sabah needs more. Uh, how many states does the uh, uh, Sabah provides the number of MP seats? The number, sorry, 25. 25. 25. That, that's 25. accessible. Okay, so the bargaining power would be there. Yes, okay. Uh, I just want to explain. Uh, mm. your, for your question, is actually the advantage is to Sarawak and not to Sabah. It's very simple. 
there is political unity in Sarawak in terms of uh, GPS is likely to win 24 to 26 to 28 out of the 31 MP seats. Whereas when you look at Sabah, out of the 25, Warisan will get five or six. Amno or, or BN will only get four or five. Uh, GRS will get eight or nine or 10. And then the rest. So when you look at it, it's a fragmented Sabah going into this uh, G15. And once you're fragmented, you're not a Sabah block. You can't demand much, actually. Uh, GPS is actually uh, much more stronger. So unfortunately for Sabah, we are fragmented. Yes. Okay, Gary, let's mm. hear it from you. Philip have said that uh, you're in a better position in Sarawak. Tell us more about your hopes and what you want to see uh, for your state. Okay, I think personally for, for Sabah and Sarawak, uh, we have never had this kind of so-called decision-making power, uh, this level of decision-making power. And I think the two of us, uh, Sabah and Sarawak, uh, we should both embrace it uh, in order to ensure that uh, future developments will be more Sabah Sarawak centric, uh, to put it that way. Huh? So let's not kid ourselves. Uh, uh, Sabah and Sarawak, we are very much uh, behind uh, as compared yes. to uh, Peninsular Malaysia in terms of uh, development economically. Uh, mm -hmm. I think let's let's look at uh, in terms of education alone. I think. Uh, uh, I speak on behalf of all Sarawakians when I say this. Uh, we not only deserve a good education system, but also the best education facilities. Our schools here are in very bad shape. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at it, uh, you know, our state even had to inject uh, over 1 billion ringgit from our own fund in advance mm -hmm. payment to the federal government to help to repay the schools. And uh, if you look at our uh, medical facilities are the same as well. And in terms mm. of uh, connectivity, uh, our roads are not good enough. Pen Borneo is not enough uh, in terms of uh, internet connectivity, flights connectivity. Yeah. And moreover, now with uh, Nusantara coming up, I think we really have to be on our toes, you see. Uh, yeah. And of course, uh, border security, that's another important issue coming up, I believe, even more so now that uh, uh, Kalimantan is, uh, is going to be a very big deal over there, over here in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in the Borneo Island. And yeah. I think politically, in my opinion, uh, sometimes so I think Philip will share the same sentiment. Uh, we, yeah. we deserve to have, I mean, we will talk about equal partnership. We deserve to have one third of the votes in parliament. We deserve to have one third of the amount of seats uh, in parliament. I think it's very unfair that uh, us Rawakians or Sabahan alike, I mean, at the current political climate, yeah. we will not have the opportunity to even lead Malaysia. Yeah? Regardless yeah. of uh, with whichever party, you see, because we, the votes in the parliament is not there for us, you see? Yeah. and I think uh, if we talk about equal partnership in Malaysia, it should be equal in that uh, in that sense, huh? Yeah, yeah, agreed. Great. Now, uh, Sabah, uh, this uh, Philip, uh, I just want to have a better understanding uh, of how things operate and the perception uh, from both Sabah and Sarawak. Um, as somebody from Peninsula and who has covered politics for decades, I've always had this uh, uh, belief and perception um, that the Sarawakian politicians or Sabahan politicians, uh, they prefer to hold the position in their respective state. They like to be in the state cabinet uh, rather to be in the federal cabinet. They feel that, you know, um, I may have much more authority and power if I stay back in my state. So uh, a federal position or cabinet position at the federal level is not something they're really um, prized for. And sometimes when we have uh, ministers from Sabah and Sarawak, uh, they tend to be much more uh, low profile uh, than those from the uh, peninsula. Uh, am I right or am I wrong? Okay. Uh, Gary? Or, or Gary first, uh, Gary? Gary? Okay, I think to an extent, uh, previously it may be right. But I think now that as you said, uh, things have uh, drastically changed. Sentiments have changed. We, I think uh, us Sarawakians, we understand that in order to see uh, greater changes, greater development in Sarawak, there must be greater political will at the federal level. And I look at, uh, as far as the context of uh, Sarawak is concerned, uh, I look at our, our Sarawakian ministers uh, in the federal uh, government. Uh, they do embrace it. They, they embrace the responsibility, the leadership role. And I think they are doing at their, their level best to actually perform, not only for Malaysia, I think not only for Sarawak, but yeah. for Malaysia yeah. as a whole. And, right. uh, yeah, so that's, that's what I see. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Philip. Okay. 
Okay, Chinwai, um, I think it has changed actually. When I talk to politicians uh, in Sabah, uh, some of them prefer to be a federal minister. And the reason is very simple. The federal government has the money, whereas the mm. Sabah government doesn't have the money. So yeah. for them, is the money is with, if you're in terms of development, etc., the money is with the federal post, depending on your post. And then, for example, yeah. um, I met a, a, pol a politician. He's with the Sabah cabinet. He said he'd rather be in the federal government and the post that he wants is the home minister post. I see. Because if he's the home minister, he can mm -hmm. he feels uh, with mm -hmm. that position, powerful position, he can settle the pendatang uh, tanpa izin, illegal immigrant mm -hmm. problem in Sabah. So that is one example where being a federal minister is much more powerful or useful for the for for a Sabah politician than being a state politician. Yeah. yeah. As an example, I think that uh, one Junaidi. Uh, has performed uh, marvelously well. Uh, he has pushed through a lot of progressive laws and that uh, at least uh, I think that uh, so far uh, as federal cabinet is concerned, he's probably the most outspoken and probably the most high-profile uh, uh, cabinet minister from Sarawak which I've ever seen. Now, um, again, uh, changes uh, in, in Malaysia, the uh, Sarawak chief minister is now known as the premier. Uh, it is new to uh, many people in, in Malaysia uh, but of course, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Australia, most of the territories, uh, they, they call themselves uh, the premier. So it's nothing unusual. Uh, but for the benefits of the people in Malaysia, especially those of the peninsula, uh, perhaps you can tell us that what's the difference uh, between a state and a territory and what would the premier actually do compared to chief minister? Um, Gary? Okay, I think uh, in, in the context of uh, territory versus the state over in Australia as compared to Malaysia, Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's, uh, yeah. it's the opposite. Uh. Yeah, the opposite. Uh. I think over there, uh, the, the territory do not have the legis legislative power, whereas over here, the territory, uh, the territories do. And uh, I think that's one. But as far as we look at the very essence of the Federation of Malaysia, it, it comprises of uh, uh, Malaya, Sabah, and Sarawak. Huh? And I think just looking at the spirit of the formation, uh, Sabah and Sarawak cannot be on the same uh, status as the other states in, in Malaya. That is, that's how we see it. Uh, and then as of uh, for, the, for the role of the premier, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty much, I think, it shouldn't be the same as the other chief ministers in other states as well. And uh, locally, to be honest, uh, uh, we, we, we feel that uh, we, are a, we are a sovereign state first. You know, Sarawak is a sovereign state first. And then uh, we federated together with uh, Malaya and Sabah uh, to form Malaysia. You know? mm. And then uh, and whatever happened after that, uh, I think we got a bit confused. We were not mm. sure what, what was our status. Uh, and then uh, we, I think locally we felt that we were almost like under the rule of Malaya, you know, in a sense. Mm. But I think lately, uh, Sarawakians, uh, I think, have gotten smarter. I think we have realized that uh, we are a sovereign state first, and that's why we are pushing for a lot of this uh, Sarawak Agenda, Malaysia Day, and uh, Sarawak mm. Day. Yeah. Philip, can you explain to our readers, I mean to our viewers now, um, in both Sabah and Sarawak, uh, the cabinet is known as ministers, state ministers. Okay, In, in, in the peninsula, they are all state ESCO members, that's all. They are not state ministers. So can you explain to... Uh, People from Malaya, okay, why you guys are called uh, ministers, state ministers, and what was the what's the definition and importance of that term? Okay, uh, when you look at it, it looks like uh, our minister has uh, it. It's because we started as a country itself. That's how we see it. So we have that uh, minister post, and then after that, we have an assistant minister. So we see ourselves as a country within a country. So that's why we have this minister, whereas uh, for pen, uh, most of the states in Peninsula Malaysia, it is uh, ESCO. So I, I think it's more that how we, uh, when we form Malaysia, it's already a, a country of it on its own. Uh, yeah. That's how Sabahan see it. But for me, uh, 
uh, your mm. question on the premier, uh, Sabah uh, did not change actually. They were like, okay, Sarawak changed the CM to premier. But this is the question I would like to ask to our Sarawak guest. Uh, it, did it, it's the, did your life change when your chief minister became premier or is your life the same? So for me, it's in Sabah also, it will be the same actually. I don't think our life will change if our chief minister become a uh, premier. I think other fundamental or basic uh, what you list infrastructure is more important than the name change. The name change is just a name. But then again, some people said perception wise, it shows that it's a country on its own. It's a big country. Sarawak has a premier. Right. The, the way I look at it, Philip, uh, put, put it this way. Lah. It's, uh, it's Sarawak going through a rebranding process. Uh, I think we have to be uh, different. Uh, we have to show that uh, we are not the same level, this, not the same status as uh, the other states in uh, Peninsula Malaysia. And I think this is uh, the step for the first step for other things, you see, because we are also fighting for our uh, autonomy in education, autonomy in healthcare, and so on. And it has to start from uh, with being with our leader, the head of our state, the head of Sawa, uh, being at a, we, we perceive it as a higher status level than the chief ministers in uh, the states in the Peninsula of Malaysia. So I think uh, if you ask me if, uh, if there's a difference, to me, there is a difference. Uh, I, I agree with uh, Gary, yeah. uh, because I think that this first step is necessary right. uh, to reflect the, um, that the look, uh, Sabah and Sarawak, they are separate entity and the equal entity with uh, Malaya. And that for too long, for too long that uh, these two states uh, have been treated so badly and not given the proper accordance. So I think this is the first step to show that look, our GPS has never been has never been so strong as now. Okay, so they need to show that uh, assertiveness. That, that comes to another part. I and I've never grown tired of, of asking the, my friends from Sabah and Sarawak to say this over and over again because that really many people in Semenanjung are really really ignorant. Okay, now they go to Sabah and Sarawak and then they ask that why must I show my IC previously or why must I show my passport because they do not seem to understand and our textbooks feel badly. Our teachers feel badly because they do not tell them that look Sabah and Sarawak has its own immigration and get his own authority and his own laws. Philip, you can have it go, okay? I don't understand it, you have it go. <laughs> okay, uh, the thing is, you must understand when uh, they signed the Malaysian agreement, uh, Sabah had what we call 20 points, Sarawak had 18 points. One of the 20 points that uh, Sabah negotiated is that, uh, what they negotiated is that, uh, that uh, immigration is under the control of the state. That's number one. So it is to con to protect the state in terms of their interests. So we we control immigration. And then the other one, which is very interesting, is also uh, English actually. We had uh, English and uh, Bahasa Malaysia are the uh, official language. So out of the three points, we had uh, different 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 points uh, to to safeguard uh, Sabah's interests uh, when it formed uh, Malaysia. So one of them is the immigration, but I, uh, the the difference actually uh the difference is if you go if I go to Sarawak and then just say if you go to Sabah Sabah is more relaxed actually you just need to give your IC then they give you what ninety days or something but Sarawak it's uh it's quite scary actually you really need to fill in that form and then uh in I think thirty days or something you're out unless you apply they 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 are much more strict about it and then the other thing about Sabah and Sarawak also. Uh, for Sabahan, if you go to Sarawak and also from Peninsula and Peninsula and Sarawak going to Sabah, you need a work permit actually. But yeah. Sabah is more relaxed in that. That's where maybe, yeah, we are more relaxed. Sarawak is uh, more strict. So Gary, if I want to work in uh, Sabah or in Sarawak, mm. uh, it means that uh, I've got to apply for a work permit and the employer must advertise uh, in the media to say that they are looking for this particular person to fill up this post. And until there's no person to fill it up, then I will only get the work permit. Is that is that correct? Uh, to, to, I'm not sure about that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about, uh, about that. Uh, but uh, regarding the, the work permit, yes, you need a work permit to work, uh, to work in Sarawak, uh, being, uh, being a peninsula relation. Uh. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, Philip does not mention about English. Uh, can mm. you tell us in, in Sarawak the, uh, the wide usage of uh, 
English. Is it correct that the, in your state assembly of Sarawak, uh, English is widely used by the uh, YB in their debates? Is that correct? Oh, yes, yes, that, that is correct. That's true, in fact. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, uh, if you look at uh, Sarawak, we have always uh, encouraged, uh, I mean, uh, since my, my father's time as well, those days, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the usage of English language uh, in our know, daily lives. Uh, and uh, if you look, if you, if you look at here in Sarawak, the, the older folks they are very proud that they can they have they have good command of the, of the language. You see, and even if you come here, like you said just now, uh, in the state legislative, they can use uh, English. Even in uh, government offices, uh, official letters, uh, we can use English here uh, in Sarawak. And I think that is uh, <clears throat> it's not that the re the reason is I think uh, even more so now you look at our leaders. Uh, they, trying to push for greater usage or greater command of uh, the English language uh, because mm -hmm. they, they truly uh, believe that uh, English is the most important language uh, worldwide. I mean, we, we, must, uh, we must admit that. And it's not just that. English is also a very important language in terms of uh, to, to the new technologies. And I think uh, if I look at uh, as far as our, our state is concerned, uh, as Rawat is concerned, uh, uh, our premier, I think, he's also a visionary, like, in a sense. But yes, he's. Uh, he look at the things that that he, he preaches here in Sarawak is on the digital uh, economy, uh, new tech, uh, uh, blockchain, etc. Or they call this uh, green energy, uh, sustainable before uh, reforestation, uh, renewable energy, and so on. I mean, this used to be jargons to us. Uh, Layman uh, Sarawakians here, but we have to adapt because we hear this every day. And when we mm -hmm. adapt, we read more, we learn more about all of these new things because uh, we have to be, we have to adapt to his vision and goals. Uh, I mean, these these are good things for Sarawak as well. And uh, yeah. I think this, like I said just now, he's just quite a visionary in a sense. But in the whole, and it projects uh, to the whole, uh, the whole uh, Sarawak government in a sense. Uh, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I think that the premier has been a strong advocate of English. And he has uh, spoken up uh, without fear. Uh, well, many politicians in uh, in Semenanjung are sort of uh, keeping quiet, you know, uh, sort of skirt around. They, they don't say it too much. While uh, in uh, Sarawak, you all have spoken quite strongly now. Uh, you mentioned about your um, grandfather. And of course, uh, many of uh, viewers here uh, may not be quite aware uh, that Gary, his uh, grandfather, was Sarawak's first uh, chief minister. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a Tan Sri Amma Stephen Kaloninka. He was his first uh, uh, chief minister of Sabah, and he founded the uh, Sarawak National Party, a multiracial party. And we're talking about 1961, okay, during the Alliance Day, where he had already had the vision to form a multiracial party. Mm -hmm. uh, here, over in Smananjo, I mean, multiracial parties only came in in 69, 68, uh, when Gerakan was formed. And the other, of course, uh, On Jaffa tried to form a multiracial party, which really didn't work out. Now, uh, how much did your grandfather uh, or your family uh, sort of instill the kind of multiracial values onto you, Gary? Right. Uh, to be honest, when I was young, uh, he he was already uh, not not in uh, great health, la, with the way, okay. uh, So, but I, I did learn a lot about him uh, uh, through my father uh, and also people around me. Uh, uh, to, to say, I mean, he was, of course, uh, I mean, uh, both of you would know that he was a, mm. quite a divisive figure, uh, yeah. historically, uh, politically, but uh, he was a good man. Uh, he was a good father to my father. And mm. uh, uh, to me, his, he, his hopes for Malaysia was that he always didn't like the fact, or he didn't always have the feeling of being shortchanged. You see? He always wanted uh, fairness. Uh, he uh, he wanted that uh, when when he when when Sarawak was uh, being part of uh, Malaysia information in Malaysia, you know, he was supposed to have uh, equal opportunity, equal everything. Like that was uh, his mindset back then. Uh, and of course, uh, well, uh, historically we all know what happened. Yeah. And so on. Uh, but uh, having said that, I if you look at uh, our family alone. We have uh, we come uh, uh, people. I mean, the often members. Come from various backgrounds. Uh, we, we through whether it's through uh, uh, marriage uh, or whatever, uh, and I think the, the values that that he has instilled in many of us, uh, many of our uh, family members, is that uh, to always stick to your principles. Uh, I think that is mm -hmm. what he has always uh, he has always uh, portrayed 
and of course uh, to always uh, think of the greater good i think that does, those are the two two values that uh, i when i think of him I, I look at those two values i want to talk about diversity now mm. uh gary yeah i mean your your, your grandfather of course has got a uh this uh, he has got the chinese ancestry right and uh, he he was uh, sent to chinese school to to learn chinese if i'm not mistaken am i correct uh actually uh well this is an interesting one uh, is that uh, i actually did, did my own uh, research on this uh, uh okay I, I interviewed uh, his siblings and so on like uh, in fact uh, uh a lot of question marks are uh, regarding our uh, chinese mm. ancestry but having said that he we he had uh, he had a chinese akong uh, where they okay. had a chinese akong uh, who, who so so called uh, uh raised him back then so he did uh he was uh he he was friends with uh, the, the Chinese community uh, mm. also uh, back then. So that's how we, we were uh, so-called uh, connected with uh, the Chinese community here in, in Sarawak. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Philip, um, you stay. You have stayed in KL for for a long time, okay. And that uh, Golden Guy is not is not a surname that uh, people in Semenanjung are familiar with, okay. Um, do people uh, always uh, perceive or think that you're a Chinese uh, and they speak Cantonese or or Hokkien to you all the okay. time. <laughs> okay, uh, answer your question. Uh, based on look, uh, they think I'm Chinese when they see me face to face. So they will, you know, I go to uh, Kopitiam or whatever. Then when I say I can't speak uh, Chinese, then they'll give me that dirty look like I'm a traitor, etc. etc. <laughs> yes, I have Chinese blood. I have Chinese blood, but the way they look is like, oh my God, like they can kill me. That's number one. But over the phone, and when I said I'm Philip Golingai, the funny thing is, they think I'm Indian because <laughs> first I have, yeah, the way I talk sounds a bit, I don't know, uh, not Chinese, not Malay. So the Golinga is it's not Melayu and not China, therefore you're Indian. So in, in Peninsula, very simple actually. Bukan China, Bukan Melayu, therefore India. So it's only three race. Three, uh, yeah, three race only. They cannot phantom actually like, oh, another one. But then uh, through the years, uh, you can see uh, with people visiting, opening them, uh, I mean, visiting Sabah or Sarawak, etc. More and more people understand. But the very funny thing about this, maybe Gary has this experience. If people know you're from Sabah, I said for you, actually, right? but the rest yeah. of Orang Melaya, they will, yeah. they will <laughs> all say, oh, Philip, uh, dari Sarawak, ma. Then, uh, for example, Jane Ritikos, they will say, oh, Jane Ritikos is from Sabah. Although she is from Sarawak. So they, I don't know why they always mix up. Like Sabah, if I tell them I'm from Sabah, I am from Sarawak. So <laughs> it, it's really a mix up. How about you, Gary? Do, do people uh, say that, oh, you are from Sabah? No. Funny, they, they no. Yeah, Gary, Gary, before you answer the question from right. Philip, hmm. you know, before you answer the question from Philip, I was right. just thinking, hmm. because Philip was saying that he went to the Kupitiam right. and they see this, and they see this, Chinese looking guy who cannot uh, speak Chinese. Mm. So I was thinking about back of my mind. Okay, Gary, uh, Gary Nikon uh, studied uh, at University of Malaya, spent a lot of time in KL. Right. I cannot imagine Gary Nikon going to going to the China Man shop to order Bakute. <laughs> and here they see this guy who looks like a Malay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Actually, uh, you know, I always get mistaken for being uh, either either a Malay or an Indian mm. over here in Sarawak, you know. No, no, Sarawak. I mean not not uh, no an Iban guy. Uh. When I <laughs> when I go for my side visits, uh, they always ask me first, you know. When they look at me, when they when they look at me, I look at I look at like, like a Malay, is it? Yeah. And uh, with my with my beard, some more uh, maybe maybe he's Malay mixed Indian. <laughs> and they look at my name, Ming Khan. Some of them, are, some of them may not know. I say a bit sounds like a bit like Indian or so. They say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, when I was in West Malaysia, you know, uh, mm. yeah, when I went to all those uh, Chinese copy terms, uh, I, I did get a lot of these uh, funny looks. Uh, uh, yeah. This guy or oh, this guy. Uh, Malay eating eating those uh, pork or something like that. Sure, can I read it on? Sure, can I, yeah. The, the worst was during, uh, it is during uh, this uh, Ramadan What's period. Uh? Yes, oh, right. uh, so when I went to all of these, uh, what do you call this, uh, fast food chains, uh, they would definitely, yeah. uh, sometimes they would ask me just to be sure, uh, or ask yeah. for, to look at my IC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Philip, you know, I will tell them that no, it's not Philip Golinka, it's Philip Gore. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now, now um, this uh, question of uh, ethnic group, okay, mm. because uh, uh, I, I think in most cases, in most cases, that people in the peninsula, they know a uh, Karazan, uh, they know an Iban, they know of Dayak. But when it comes to Lumbawang, like, 
I was Lumbawang, okay? Was Bidayo. Now, that, that one, they really bit uh, uh, confused. I mean, mm -hmm. Sabah has got almost 42 ethnic groups mm -hmm. and 200 over sub-ethnic groups. Sarawak, more than 200 different groups. Now, um, if you're the education minister, okay? Now, uh, both of you can have a go. How would you want people in Malaysia, especially those in Sinajung, to understand and learn more about these different ethnic groups? especially the Orang Ulu, people from the Highlands. Uh, Gary, what would you want? If you're the uh, education minister, what would you want the kids to learn? Oh, I think, uh, look, even myself, I'm, I'm a Sarawakian. I, I can't name you all the ethnic groups yeah. over here in, in, in Sarawak, to be honest. Uh, but what, what I would like to see, I mean, I mean, not just in terms of education, uh, in terms yeah. of uh, the awareness as a whole, you see, uh, the, uh, my perception is that uh, we, we always feel that uh, we are like a window dressing only, mm -hmm. like uh, the, the Sarawakian culture and so on. We are only during, during when, when it is uh, to promote tourism and so on that uh, you will show these uh, Sarawakians uh, in the longhouse, you know, yeah. uh, during the loin, loincloth, uh, the baju and that. I mean, I mean, we are more than that. Uh, yeah. Sarawakians are more than that. I mean, we, now, if you look at uh, Sarawakians or Sarawak as a whole, we are trying to portray ourselves as we want to become a high income nation state. You know, we want to portray ourselves, we want to be a nation state uh, of, of comprising of professionals, you know, uh, with uh, promoting uh, 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 renewable energy, green tech, and whatnot, all these things, you know. But uh, with, if, the, if the federal government or, or Malaysia as a whole do not uh, project us as that, I think. It's, it's how to say, it's, it's, you're not portray, portraying the right Sarawak at this moment. You know, we are more than just uh, what we see yeah. in the tourism adverts. I think we have to start uh, at least from there. Uh, that, that's what I think. I mean, maybe yeah. Philip has uh, more things to say on this. Philip? Yeah. Oh, okay. Jesse, I'm the uh, education minister. I, what, what, what I want to see is uh, the, a bit of change in the history syllabus. There is less because it looks like uh, our history, we don't talk about the formation of Malaysia. It's very um, Merdeka 1957 centric. But yeah. this is argument. Eh? Argument yeah. is that was the formation of Malaya, Federation of Malaya. Right. Then 1963 is the formation of Malaysia where Sabah, Sarawak, Singapore and mm. Malaya uh, merge and it become Federation of Malaysia. So uh, we are not taught about that in, in history. There's no emphasis. So the heroes, they are not introducing new heroes of this federation called Malaysia. One of the big heroes is Sabah. The other big hero is Sarawak. Uh, Singapore, uh, I don't know whether hero is zero, but that's a different uh, history. So, okay. And then the interesting thing, uh, we are going to have a holiday. Malaysian love holiday. On Friday, is it? Uh, Thursday or Friday, we're going to have a holiday, which is on September 16. Why yeah. do we have that holiday? Why are you in the shopping mall and not at work on September 16? I think most, most uh, people in uh, Peninsula Malaysia do not really understand or appreciate uh, why. I mean, they love that holiday, but they don't know why. But whereas for Sabah and Sarawakian, for them, is this is a, a big day for them and not yeah. uh, August 31st because August 31st has got nothing to do with them. It is the independence of Malaya. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so the emphasis is not really towards Malaysia Day. So mm -hmm. I, I think uh, this should be taught in a school if I'm the uh, education minister. Okay, one more thing. We talk about heroes. Since you mentioned heroes. Um, can you name one or a few heroes that you think should be highlighted in our textbooks? Uh, Philip and then Gary, your heroes from your state. Okay, uh, heroes is, uh, we're talking about uh, the early part. Huh? We're not talking about the yeah, recent early part. heroes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, for me, the big uh, hero when I grew up is actually, we like to talk about uh, Tun Fuad, he's the founding father. Then the other one is uh, Tun Mustafa. But then the one that uh, is forgotten, and I kind of forgotten his name already, uh, uh, Gun Sanad. Gun Sanad is uh, one of the main players back then. And he's an interesting uh, person. He said, let's think deeply before we uh, reform Malaysia. So for him, is 
uh, be cautious. So he's one of the forgotten hero. So there must be some reason why he was cautious. So for me, maybe these are the forgotten uh, heroes. Gary? Yeah, I think uh, I, when, when people say heroes of, of Sarawak, uh, they either mention those, uh, those who fought during the, the, the formation of uh, Malaysia mm. or before formation of Malaysia, I mean, like those uh, Iban heroes, like, like the famous one, probably, uh, obviously, is Renta Pasi. But yeah. to, to me, uh, hero, hero, unsung heroes are people who actually defended uh, Sarawak and Malaysia after the formation of Malaysia, you know, the yeah. rangers or border scouts, uh, people like uh, uh, the late uh, Kanang Anak Langkau. I think that is a good uh, example of someone who was uh, an unsung hero, you know, people who actually uh, who have fought, who have fought for Malaysia after the formation of, of Malaysia. I think those are the people that should be highlighted. Uh, more uh, rather than rather than just talking about uh, those. Uh, of course, it's, it's great to, to see uh, our figures like like uh, Rantap, Sherif Masafo being mentioned as well. These are very monumental figures. But mm. beyond that, after the formation of Malaysia, uh, our rangers, our uh, we are very proud of our Sarawak rangers. We are very proud of our border scout, and uh, these people should be highlighted more. Uh, both state Sabah and Sarawak. Uh, actually quite famous for politicians who defect, who hop around. Uh, and, and both states seems to, especially in Sabah, okay, more precisely, uh, have produced uh, many political frogs. Okay? Uh, why do you think that um, Sabah, okay, and to some extent also in uh, Sarawak, why, why this culture is more prevalent than other states in Semenanjung? You know, I think one of the factors is this, actually. Uh, when Sabah politicians fight among each other, it's actually a fight between, they say, uh, brother and brother. They say, Tun Mustafa versus Donald Munjuntin is brothers fighting. So it's okay, actually, we punch you, punch you, okay, brother, fight, etc., etc. But the problem is when this brother called big brother, and then they call big brother, at the time it was KL, now it's Putrajaya. So Putrajaya steps in. Once Putrajaya steps in, and then with that Putrajaya kind of money, they're the one who will be uh, changing the political equation by uh, buying up this politician to make one political party weaker so that the party that, uh, that Putrajaya wants becomes the ruling party. So that's the sad thing, actually. Uh, the main problem, actually, this is what I understand about Sabah now. The main problem is it's divide and rule. Sabahans have been uh, divided into this political party, that political party. Even now, like I say, we are fractured Sabah politics. It's because brothers and brothers and brothers are all fighting among each other so that they are controlled by somebody above. So the frogging is because of uh, one of the reasons is this. Okay, quick one from Gary. I, I think... Uh... It's even, it's even more pre uh, prevalent over there in Sabah, I believe. Uh, Sarawak uh, is <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not so much, but uh, there are some, of course, uh, there, there, there are some. Uh, uh, look, uh, at the end of the day, I think uh, it's all about uh, integrity, uh, uh, put it that way. Uh, we have to promote good integrity. Uh, we, we should do, do away with uh, all this uh, 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 party hopping. Uh, and, and so on. Uh, why? Why is it? Uh, I really, I really have no answer for that. Also. I really don't know why. Why is that? But probably because of, uh, for for power, for for own personal gain, definitely, uh, for own, uh, uh, I don't know, political gain and so on. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up uh, with uh, the uh, final words from you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have from uh, Gary uh, as we approach uh, Malaysia Day. Um, please tell us your hope for Sabah, for Sarawak, and for Malaysia. Quick one from Gary okay. and then Philip. All right. Uh, for Sarawak, I hope that uh, we will grow in strength uh, politically, uh, economically, uh, and of course uh, we we continue to to tolerate uh, one another, be united. Uh, I will strengthen our uh, Sarawak spirit. I think that's what I hope for Sarawak. As for Malaysia, I hope to see uh, a more uh, tolerant Malaysia. Uh, we have to promote greater equality uh, in Malaysia. Uh, look, uh, Malaysia is a very unique nation. Uh, we should embrace it. 
and I, I do believe that so Malaysia can become a great nation if we all just uh, work together. Yeah. Philip? Okay. Uh, for me, is for Malaysia is I think uh, Sabah and Sarawak is a lesson of diversity. So sometimes this one I feel uh, a bit long. Uh, I've gone for certain weddings in, like for example, Penang in some a bit rural area, and it's only a certain race. It's like hundred percent of the race, except for me, is uh, attending that wedding. Then I go to Kedah also. I'm the only one actually. So we are very scary actually in terms of a. Uh, uh, country in certain pockets of uh, Malaysia, the, can you imagine in that wedding, there's only one race only. The, I'm the only one actually. I mean, yeah, 99%. So it means they are living in their silo. So what they should embrace is they should embrace Sabah and Sarawak where we have diversity. When you go for our wedding, you will have, uh, just make it simple. Lah. We will have Bajau, lah. Uh, you have mm -hmm. Kadazan, you have Murud. And then even the food, we will have certain food for certain community, certain food for certain commun community, etc., etc. So I think what we do is it's not that, oh, okay, okay, we live in our Kadazan world and therefore we try not to involve other people. But we are we are we we really embrace our diversity. So I think uh, they should follow uh, what Sabah and Sarawak does and also what the Bangsa crowd do. Actually, many people forget that the Bangsa crowd is actually very Malaysia, actually. You have yeah. uh, Chinese, Indian, Sabahan, etc., etc., all at a certain pub uh, celebrating Malaysia Day. <laughs> I think, Philip, uh, you have said it uh, very uh, aptly that the, as we celebrate the Malaysia Day, it's a reminder to everyone in Malaysia, especially to the politicians in Putrajaya, that look, Sabah and Sarawak is a great model of diversity and Malaysia does not belong to just one race or one community. It is a reflection of the kind of diversity and the multiracial, multi-religious aspects of this country. Malaysia embraces diversity. And this, I would say, I will even say that Sabah and Sarawak particularly is the last bastion of hope for Malaysia for diversity. So uh, Malaysians, thank you for watching this. Please follow Gary Nikon, Philip Golingai, and Wong Chun Wai on our social platform. And happy Malaysia Day from Malaysia.